Have you ever thought about how the third world could be transformed if each one of us gave one dollar? Robert Freeman has. He's a social studies teacher at Los Altos High School. In 2007, he began to think about the impact that students could have on the world if each contributed just one dollar. It was almost by accident that this idea turned into the nonprofit organization One Dollar for Life. Since its inception, it has built several new schools in Kenya, Nepal, Nicaragua, and Indonesia, bought 60 desks for a school in Malawi, bought two milk cows to feed orphans in Kenya, collected and sent 452 bicycles to Africa, and bought 20 piglets to save 20 Nepalese girls from slavery. But what makes this program really special is that the local students not only fund these projects, they also visit and work at the project sites. How did One Dollar for Life get started? One day at lunch, I was in the classroom in my desk grading papers, and there were some kids on the, on the desks eating their lunch, and they were kind of griping about how bad the world was. And I listened to it for a long time, and teenagers can be kind of cynical, you know, self-indulgent. Uh, uh, but I finally got tired, and I said, you guys are so cynical. Why don't you actually do something to make the world better? What if all of you teenagers just did the smallest bit? And we didn't know it at the time, what the potential of that could be. But we kept the conversation going, and we talked about it. And we, we decided, what if we could get every kid in the school to give one dollar, just the smallest bit? 1,700 kids at Los Altos High School. And so we did this. And we started to come up with the idea that we could build a school in the developing world for kids who ne had never had a school. And we found four other high schools who agreed to do the same thing, to hold a fundraiser and ask every kid to give one dollar. And between our five schools, we raised $9,000. And that summer, we built a school in Kenya little village of Naru Moru for 45 kids who had been going to class in a horse barn. And that was how it was born. And you went with them. How did that work? Every one of the kids were blown away by how industrious these other kids were, these Kenyan kids. I'll give you an example. The kids would wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, work an hour, hour and a half to help the family because it's agriculture, and so, you know, they're going out into the fields and, and, and managing farms is what it is. And then the, the kids would walk sometimes two, two and a half hours to get to school, to be there by 7.30, say. And then they would stay in class until 5 o'clock, and then they would walk back home. And our kids were unquestionably astounded and ashamed. And did they come home and work harder, do you think? They came home and worked so much harder, you can't believe it. Uh, when we took a group of kids to Nicaragua two years later, one of our uh, uh, kids who came back and said, and she actually wrote this in our newsletter, she said, I was, I was so surprised. These people are so happy, and they have so little. And it made me realize that real happiness isn't the things you have. You know, it's a matter of your heart and the relationships you have with your community. And she said, I came home, and I cleaned out my closet and gave half of the clothes away to good girls. I think I can say, with, without fear of contradiction, every single child comes back with a sense of humility and grace. You know, humility at how easy their life is, because it's pretty easy where we live here, you know? They come back and they realize how blessed they are, their lives are. 